God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. Tonight is our Wednesday night Bible study. Welcome, and welcome to all you that are here today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. We've had such a wonderful day today with ministry, and now it's time to teach the Word of God. Today we will be speaking on the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. My beloved, the biggest misconception with prophecy is between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ. These two events are often confused, for they are two distinct events on the prophetic timeline of God. Through this short teaching series, I hope to enlighten you to the difference between the two prophetic events. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you give us a mind to want to understand your word and what the difference is between the rapture and the second coming. Anoint me, Lord, this evening to make it clear what the differences are. Let your Holy Spirit abound and have his way this evening, Father. In Jesus' name, as we pray, amen. My beloved, please like us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. These are the social media outlets that we are currently on. Thank you in advance. So we are going to open up with the topic of the rapture of the church. The rapture is when Jesus Christ returns and takes every Christian that is still on earth and resurrects all those who have died in Christ, which we call Christians, and takes them to heaven with him. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 and 17 says, The Lord will come from heaven with a command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the dead who believed in Christ will come back to life. Then, together with them, we who are still alive will be taken in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. In this way, we will always be with the Lord. When we are taken, we will be with the Lord for all eternity. Beloved, the rapture is God's protection of his saints, his Christians. May I say, his true saints. And he protects them from the tribulation period, the seven years of tribulation, which is the judgment that will be poured out on all the inhabitants of the world. There are some who argue the tribulation period will begin before the rapture. However, Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's from the King James Version. So I believe the church of Jesus Christ will not experience the judgment that God has planned for that period of time. Thank God. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52, Paul writes, I will explain a mystery to you. Not every one of us will die, but we will all be changed. It will happen suddenly, quicker than the blink of an eye. At the sound of the last trumpet, the dead will be raised. We all will be changed so that we will never die again. We will be resurrected, never to die again. Praise God, my beloved. In the words of Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, we read, No one knows the day or hour. The angels in heaven don't know, and the Son himself doesn't know. Only the Father knows. That is the contemporary English version. My beloved, how foolish then to, is it to be figuring out or trying to figure out or prophesying when the Lord Jesus Christ will be coming. So my beloved, always be ready for Jesus to come back because you never know when he is going to return. The following verses that I will read give us a warning about being ready for Jesus' return in the rapture, which is to come. And these are read from the contemporary English version. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. When the Son of Man appears, things will be just as they were when Noah lived, or in Noah's time, remember the flood? Matthew 
24 and verse 38 reads, People were eating, drinking, and getting married right up to the day that the flood came and Noah went into the ark or into the boat. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 39 reads, They didn't know anything was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. This is how it will be when the Son of Man appears, when Jesus Christ comes back in the rapture, which we call in the Greek the harpazo, or the catching away. As we read this, the one question to ask yourself is, are you going to be ready for the rapture? Are you? If you miss this event, you are going to experience the great tribulation, seven years. So my beloved, it would be wise for you to repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior this very day. And at the end of this, we will pray. And let's talk about the second coming of Jesus. My beloved, at the end of the seven-year tribulation, the Bible says that Jesus returns. This is the second coming of Christ. This time he comes to earth, not as a humble child born in a manger in Bethlehem, but as the powerful and glorious King of kings and Lord of lords of the universe. And he will be surrounded by all of his saints, us who believe and were taken up in the rapture, and those who have died in the process. And when this happens, my beloved, we will come back with Jesus and stay with him and stand while he gains victory at Armageddon and establishes his kingdom here on earth forever. Now let me read to you some scriptures, okay, to verify that what I'm saying is true. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 reads, Look, he is coming with the clouds. Everyone will see him. Even the ones who struck a sword through him, all people on the earth will weep because of him. Yes, it will happen. Amen. That's from the contemporary English version. Also from the contemporary English version, we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, I pray that God who gives peace will make you completely holy and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept healthy and faultless until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. So that is Paul's prayer, not only to the Thessalonians, but also to us who are here right now, we who are Christian. James chapter 5 and verse 7 reads, My friends, be patient until the Lord returns. Think of farmers who wait patiently for the spring and summer rains to make their valuable crops grow. That is from the contemporary English version also. So my beloved, Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. Very interesting. After Jesus had said this, and while they were watching, he was taken up in a cloud. They could not see him after that. Acts chapter 1 and verse 10 reads, But as he went up, they kept looking into the air, or into the sky. Suddenly, two men dressed in white clothes, or white robes, some translations say, were standing there beside them. Very interesting, the next verse, Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. They said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here and looking up into the sky? Jesus has been taken to heaven, but he will come back in the same way that you have seen him go. My beloved, Jesus is going to come back the same way. He left from the Mount of Olives, and he will return to the Mount of Olives. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10 reads from the contemporary English version, they also tell how you are waiting for his son, Jesus, to come from heaven. God raised him from death, and on the day of judgment, Jesus will save us from God's anger. Jesus will be our mediator to the Father. He will be our lawyer, and we will be declared innocent because Jesus will say, Father, I died for them. I know that. But to others that do not accept Christ as their Savior and Lord, he will say, I know them not, Father. Depart into the lake of fire. And that will be horrible because you will spend eternity burning. That is forever and ever. It's not temporary, no reprieve, no retrial, no probation, no parole, no nothing. It will be for eternity. Luke chapter 21 and verse 27 reads, Then the Son of Man will be seen, coming in a cloud with great power and glory. That's also from the contemporary English version. 
Now, our, our last verse is also from the contemporary English version, and it reads from Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27. The Son of Man will soon come in the glory of his Father and with his angels to reward all people for what they have done. And that will be good and bad. If you are in Christ, you're innocent. If you are out of Christ, you will be declared guilty. So, my beloved, closing points. At the rapture, Jesus comes for his saints, Christians, those that have accepted him as their Savior and Lord. At the second coming, he comes with his saints at the Battle of Armageddon. He comes back to the Mount of Olives, my beloved. What a wonderful sight that is going to be for us when we are there with him. But for those that are the enemies of God, it will be total destruction. At the rapture, Jesus does not come all the way to the earth. At the second coming, his feet touch down on the Mount of Olives, and he will reign on earth. Praise God. At the rapture, Jesus comes with a blessing for his saints. At the second coming, he brings judgment for those who have rejected him, as I just said a moment ago. My beloved, very important point I want to make here. Never forget this point. The rapture can happen at any moment before I even finish this message. Could be tomorrow. Could be next year. Ten years from now. I may never see the rapture. I may go by way of the grave. But I won't be resurrected because the dead in Christ shall rise first. So either way, whether I'm alive or I'm dead, I will be with Christ forever. So, once again, the rapture can happen at any time. Are you ready for Jesus to come back? Well, my beloved, after the rapture takes place, seven years later, the second coming will take place. And it'll be hell here for God's enemies. They will be destroyed totally. Don't be here for that. In fact, don't miss the rapture of the church. Don't be subject to the seven years of tribulation. You won't like it. Come to Jesus Christ tonight and be assured that you will go with Jesus Christ whenever he comes. If it's tonight, tomorrow, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, who knows? No one knows the day or the hour. So don't try to figure it out. Just be obedient. Be in Christ. If you never see the rapture, you will die in Christ. And when the rapture takes place, you will be taken. But you will be with the Lord forever. Don't take a chance and miss the rapture and have to go through the tribulation period. Don't. You won't like it. In order to survive, you may end up taking the mark of the beast, 666, which means you are damned. You are doomed forever. Please receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And if you would like to do that, I want to lead you in a prayer to assure you that you will be with Christ should he come tonight in the rapture. The criterion is, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in place of all power and all majesty. You must believe. Plus, you must be sorry for your sins. You must repent of your sins and never turn back to them sins. If you want to do that today, if you want to be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and go in the rapture, please pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the teaching message tonight, the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. It struck me in my heart, down deep in my soul. I know that if Jesus would come tonight, that I would not be taken. I would be here to go through the tribulation period. I don't want to be here during that horrible time. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, so now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in place of power and majesty from where he should come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. I promise to turn with your help from all temptation, from all unrighteous acts. I would do my best, but I know I will need your help. I'm depending on you because I will be your child. I will be with you forever. And I know that you will watch over me until the day comes when you will take me with you to heaven, whether it's by the rapture or by the grave. And I believe that t today was my repentance, my confession of faith in Jesus Christ, that I have become a Christian. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented, you were truly sorry for your sins. You asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior. 
he'd be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. And what I want you to do, first of all, is thank God. Then what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, to teach you, to put you in a new Christian's class, to teach you so that you can tell others, you can minister to others. Ask him to give you a Bible if you have one. And then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our website, which is www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmonothian.com. You can continue to follow us on YouTube, Spreaker, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook. But please, let me hear from you. If you live in our local area here, you can listen to us on our gospel radio stations, 95.5 FM and 1650 AM. God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for being here and joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. And remember, be ready to go in the rapture because it can come at any time. God bless you and go with God.